Welcome to The Shooting Show. This week we follow Chris Dalton on unfamiliar territory as he goes stalking urban fallow. Plus we bring you all the latest news from the shooting world. Okay, I'm just back from Raven Road, back to a lovely um, sunny Ayrshire day. Um, basically went down yesterday, uh, I got a call from a farmer who um, lives just on the edge of uh, Bingley in West Yorkshire, a really busy area actually, and uh, it's a riding school for the disabled amongst other things, he does timber, um, firewood, logs, so it's a fairly big um, plantation of trees just on the edge of a banking on the Air Valley, right at the side of the River Air. Um, and there is a large fallow population anyway spring grass is coming through and he's finding that deer are coming through early morning feeding overnight and he's seen them frequently 20 20 plus animals down on his grass so um, fairly dry season this year late sort of dry spring therefore the grass is not growing so he's a bit concerned about it so Although I'm on top of my call really for what I wanted to do this year, I think really we're going to have to take another few animals off just to deter them from eating the grass and keep everybody happy. The added advantage is that it's fairly close to um, Brian and Paul Elmer Chedzgoy who featured recently on this, uh, on this show, uh, so they can come across and Brian needs to complete uh, one stalk, he's got ICR3 to do on his level 2, so hopefully I can you know, kill two birds with one stone as it were. No well, Brian and Paul were able to meet me um, from work, so around about sort of 5 30, 6 o'clock in the evening. Um, I actually put Elmer out in a seat on his own this time and actually took Brian with me. Plan being that we're going to sit, uh, or we sat basically, a nice sort of open area. Um, the fallow live in one top corner of the wood and tend to migrate down through some fairly clearly defined tracks to feed on the field, the pasture land, um, at night, so we're going to try and intercept them. Got a real nice view from where we are, we can see through the trees, so anything moving down as it drops towards ducks we should hopefully get a shot at. But Brian's got a moderated Tika with him tonight. Trusty Sarovsky on top, Z4. Well, we sat with, with Brian um, and unfortunately no fallow um, appeared. Uh, we did get row uh, in front of us, which weren't on the cull sheet, so they were left alone. Uh, nice footage of a nice book there, which uh, you can see on, on film. About 30 minutes before we were going to completely lose the light, uh, sort of suggested to Brian that he walked up to the top end of the wood just to see if we could catch the fallow coming down. They're notorious for coming out, last thing at night fallow. We moved up to the corner of the wood, um, try and catch them from the corner they normally kind of lie up in and couch down during the day. As soon as we got there actually there were a group of 20 plus fallow came um, moving out probably 15-20 minutes before dark. Initially the shot wasn't on, unfortunately they came out and they were really sort of skylined. Um, and we did watch them for quite a while. Uh, we thought we probably wouldn't be able to take a shot at that point, but for, luckily, uh, luckily for Brian anyway, they did actually start to move in towards us. They might work in this way, just give us a bit of an angle. Get off that skyline. And once they got past like a little wall which subdivides the compartment, the field boundary, we started to get a backstop. Um, so again, Brian was able to take uh, one of the doors just as it came into a nice sort of clearing. Just let it get 
uh, into that little gap there, so you've got a nice safe backstop. Yeah, okay, you got what you got now. Yeah. Yeah. If you're comfortable, you can take that. <coughs> well done. Well done. Just down. There she goes. Yeah. Well done. Good. I just let them drift off. I don't want to take any more out of these. Mm -hmm. I'll let them drift off. So we managed to get his grallock done and managed to get his level two finished off. So a nice tidy grallock. So by the time we dealt with that, it was actually too light, too pretty dark, really. Well, it's pitch black, so we couldn't recover them. So fairly cool evenings at this time of year. So we sort of suspended, uh, hung the, the deer in a tree, cooling overnight, um, and then I will recover them um, the following morning. I stalked and shot a couple more fallow this morning, so we're actually taking four all together. Okay, now we're picking up um, the deer that we've hung up and left. cooling overnight in a convenient tree. Okay, and there's a fourth deer shot this morning, just training out, and I'm going back in the car, and then we'll get everything back into the ladder. It's completely grown up out, so it's just a lift straight into the car. Okay, so that's the job done. Uh, it's going to get changed because it's a bloody warm morning, I'm sweating like a bugger. We'll get these down into the ladder, just finished off, and then take the pretty nice. I must admit it's very, very strange for me stalking in a, an urban environment like that. I'm so used to being up here in the southwest of Scotland where you very little get any disturbance at all. If I actually see anybody when I'm driving on my way to, to, to stalk, never mind when I'm actually stalking, it is actually quite an unusual thing. It just shows you how deer can adapt and live in and amongst us. And a lot of people in that valley have got no idea whatsoever that they're a fallow and row. Um, uh, you know, in and among where they're walking the dogs. I don't know what they do, they must walk around with their eyes shut, but they never seem to see them. And they said, what, what, deer here in West Yorkshire? And there you go, there are a lot. Chris calling on all his expertise there. And now it's the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. Scottish politicians met last week to discuss licensing grouse moors. Holyrood's Environment Committee heard evidence from an anti shooter who said raptor persecution is intense on grouse moors. Basque, the GWCT, the Scottish Gamekeepers Association, and other organisations all provided written evidence to counter this claim. The committee didn't make any firm decisions, but has referred the issue to the Cabinet Secretary. Ely Hawk has backed the Paras, providing them with 5,000 cartridges for a string of clay shooting wins. The 3rd Battalion Parachute Regiment clay shooting team won the Inter-Unit Competition, Best Infantry Unit, Best Infantry Man and High Gun for the Day in the Inter-Forces Challenge Cup. They were shooting a load Ely Hawk designed specifically for them, based around para maroon cartridges. Team Captain Major Scrivener said Ely Hawk had really pulled out all the stops. The Countryside Alliance will exhibit at this year's Game Fair. Celebrating its 20th anniversary this year, the Alliance will take up residence on Gunmakers Row to meet its members and represent country sports. Keith Green from the Alliance said the Game Fair was an integral part of the Alliance's calendar, and not being there would be unthinkable. Get your tickets now at thegamefair.org. And finally, get yourself down to the Clay Shooting Classic this weekend at Southdown Gun Club. Running from Thursday to Sunday, this massive competition is set to attract the biggest names on the sporting circuit, including George Digweed, Mark Windsor, Martin Myers and more. And its prize fund stands at nearly £30,000 in value. Last minute spaces on this 150 bird shoot may be available. Call the number on screen now to inquire. That was the Shooting Show News. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. But please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been The Shooting Show. <laughs>